Derek Harper, and welcome to Harp's Court. Harp's Court is a new podcast that's going to bring you all types of conversations. I'm honored today to have one of my favorite people join me on my show, Harp's Court, once again. It's the great, and I do mean great, Jalen Brunson. How in the world are you, man? Not a lot going on in your world, I guess. Yeah, um, decent amount going on, but uh, I'm good. Are you? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing all right. You, uh, yeah, obviously leaving Dallas, headed to New York. Just curious to some of the things that you're probably, Jalen, if you would, miss about being a Maverick, had a great couple of years here. And now it's on to the next for you. But just talk about some of the uh, thoughts and memories that you'll hold on to leaving Dallas. Um, A lot. Um, <laughs> I got a long time, so please elaborate. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I want to miss my teammates, yeah. most importantly. I want to miss my teammates, miss my guys. Um, they uh they made my life a lot easier and without them I wouldn't have even be um in this situation I was. Um so I'm gonna miss them a lot. I um I think obviously the organization, uh the, the coaching staff, the two staffs I had and um everyone in the organization has been um been nothing but amazing. And um I'm gonna miss that and I can go on and on, but especially the fans. I think go the fans on and go, on. Go. I want to hear. Well, <laughs> the, the fans welcome me with open arms. Um, they, um, it was definitely a little bittersweet, you know, for them for to hear me um, having to go. But um, I, I had I had the best four years I could ever imagine. Um, they believed in me. They, uh, you know, took a chance with me, and um, I kept getting better and better every year. And um, I'm going to continue to do that. Mm. Uh, but um, like I said before, man, they just they were just nothing short of amazing. They were all awesome. They were awesome. And um, do you get? I think what I'm going to miss most. I think no. The thing the thing I'm going to miss most is probably the proximity of everything with the <laughs> where I lived, yeah. the arena, the practice facility. So it's a little different now, but. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss a lot about Dallas. They, they, they take a chance on me, and I, I'm nothing. I mean, I'm just, I'm nothing without them, and I'm very thankful. You know, you, you, you had the opportunity to play for Coach Carlisle, all-time great coach, obviously. Um, and then this, just, just this past season, you played with a Hall of Fame, played for a Hall of Fame point guard. How was that different, Jalen? And what, what did you take from J. Kidd? I mean, he's obviously what he accomplished as a, as an NBA player speaks yeah. for itself. Talk about playing under him and your growth under him as a, as a coach. Yeah. Um, playing for JK was amazing. Um, he, he pushed me, you know, he made me better. Um, I think what one thing that was summarized our relationship and how he pushed me was, um, Remember the Sacramento game at home when uh, I hit Doe in the corner for the three? Yeah. He, um, everyone's excited. Like, Doe just has a game on the shot. Everyone's yeah. a little pumped. <laughs> but um, there was about, like, three seconds left in the game. Or there was, was a little bit of time left in the, in the game Okay. after Doe hit the shot. So we get in the locker room. And everyone's, like, everyone's excited. You know, Doe just hit the shot. And um, I made a great pass to, to Doe to, uh, for him to get that shot off. So the coach is like, yeah, congrats on the win and everything. Coach barely says anything after meetings, uh, after games. He just wants us to kind of, for us and to them to kind of like rest on it and sleep on it and then come back the next day and get better. But um, he comes in the locker room, says, Dill, great shot, Jalen, great pass, but you should have waited a little bit. No, we won at time, we won no time on the clock. Right. We won the last shot. And so everyone's like, like kind of like, <laughs> like, yo, he just he just made a great pass. He just, right. he just had a great, great shot. Like, while we bring this mood down. That had so, to be a but, damn um, I mean, moment. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I think me and J kid, like we kind of, he understood me. I understood him. Uh, he knew that I wanted to be pushed every single second of every day. And 
um, we had that type of relationship where he was comfortable doing that. And so the fact that he was able to do that in that situation where uh, everyone else may have thought like, oh, like, like relax, like it's cool. Like me and yeah, yeah. Jay like kind of knew what it was. And so um, yeah, I think that just summarizes uh, our relationship. And but I love playing with him for him. Yeah. He pushed me. He put me in this position. Um, he, he, he's owed a lot. Man, you, um, I, I think, and this is just me from the outside looking in, I've gotten to know you a little bit and um, I'm honored that I, I, I have Jalen. And I mean that in all sincerity, but you know, the player, I think it's well documented. You won championships in college that you have that it factor, if you would. But mm-hmm. what, what about Jalen outside of basketball? What, 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 what do you like doing? I know we golfed a couple of times and I know you, you enjoy that, but who is Jalen away from the game? I'm just curious to uh, how you would describe yourself uh, when you're away from it. That's great. Wow. Um, <laughs> Surely I like to take you know. A little bit of time. Yeah. <laughs> I like to take a little bit of time away from basketball, um, but uh, not too much. I think for me, when I, after the season, I take about a week or two off, mm-hmm. at least a week off of not, absolutely nothing. Disconnect. And then um, disconnect. And then like the next week or whatever, start with like yoga, start with a little bit of strength training and then gradually bring basketball back into it. Um, Cause I'm a person that I just, I need to, I just need to, I need to do something. And it doesn't <laughs> have to be full force workout or anything, but I kind of gradually bring it back into it. But um, that's like my time of when I'm like kind of letting loose of the competitiveness off the court. And, um, but when I do that, the competitive competitiveness is still there. It goes with golf, it goes with anything else I do, <laughs> video games, right? Um, literally anything. Like it's, I just like to compete, I like to have fun, I like to like, you know, just, that's just how I am. That's just how I was raised. That's how I just. That's all I know. And um, I just, I'm a person that's to socialize. I like to socialize. I like to be with my friends, hang out with old teammates hanging out with current teammates. Um, still playing on Maxi coming down the shore uh, next month. So hopefully that's, that's an, annu- that's an annual garden. trip, isn't it? Yeah, it's an annual trip. Yeah. Um, he has a whole, he has to, he says he's going back to Germany, I think for something that he may, he may uh, make a pit stop before he goes to Dallas. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, I'll hold him accountable for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you would consider if you would, J- JB Maxi, you're a guy. And I know all of you guys have a special bond. It never fails when you're teammates mm-hmm. with somebody, but Maxi would be your guy. Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of those guys are my guys. I think I actually, was it today? Um, today or yesterday, I, I was on the phone with Dorian. Okay. So, um, I mean, those guys are my guys. And um, right after I, I uh, or right before I kind of made a decision to go, um, I called everybody. Any tears? Called all my teammates. I, any tears or mm-hmm. anything shared through through the process, JB? It, it had to be oh, emotional. Me? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It had Come to be now. emotional. Yeah, yeah. That's I, that's life changing stuff. Yeah, life changing stuff. Um, I was there was definitely some tears. Yeah. Um. Uh, it was it was definitely emotional. I um, was super excited. And um, when you hear something like that, when you hear numbers like that, it kind of just doesn't seem real. I, I honestly doesn't seem real to me. But I, I, um, Why? <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. It just. It just. I know people say I, I worked for it. I earned it. I mean, I. I. Be, I. Be, I, be, I believe. Facts. I did as well. Um, as but, president um, of like, the Jalen, as president of the Jalen Brunson fan club, it's what I was labeled while you were here. <laughs> I promise you, you deserve it. Never doubt that you deserve it. I appreciate that. Um, I think uh, what what is funny though, I um I was just in Chicago at my high school running a camp, and mm-hmm. um someone uh, someone who I haven't seen in a while was like, "Oh man, like this this new money is going to change Jalen." <laughs> and um, <laughs> I think my one of my best friends, my best friend, and my cousin were there. Yeah. And they looked at each other and laughed and said, he hasn't changed one bit. He's still a clown. So, 
It's hard. So, um, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. No, no. I was just saying, like, so, like, I don't plan on changing as a person or anything. But, um, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely blessed and honored to for all that to happen this past couple couple weeks. Do you care how your your Mavericks do, or you you move on? I've been traded before, and mm-hmm. I swear to you, I can't lie to you. I, I I instantly shift from being a Maverick to being a Nick. In fact, I, you were a free agent and you were I re- you were signed by the Knicks. But when I got traded to New York, and you weren't eleven too, by the way, way to go, JB. Rep- <laughs> represent <laughs> that was my jersey number when I was a Knickerbocker, but. Uh, Mm-hmm. Do you just move on? Is it easy to just shift out and just go on about your business? You almost have to, right? Yeah, um, definitely go about my business, but um, is, there's no bad blood right. at all for me. Yeah, there's no That's... bad blood. So I, I, I mean, I'm a root for them. I'm, I'm gonna be happy for them for their success and hope everyone. JB, on, do you, JB, do you think continues to be healthy? Yeah, no bad blood. But do you think they? Yeah. Do you think there's any bad blood coming out of out of out of the Mavericks organization? Um, I don't think so. No, okay. I don't think so. I no. I I think um, business. they all knew that I it, it's business first of all. But they, I think they all knew that I loved my time there and I loved being a part of it. And um, every time I stepped on the court, I wasn't. I was playing for those people, like the play, people I was. Playing for the coaches and the teammates, not everyone in the organization. I give them my all every time I was on the court. And so um, I wanted to be there for the long haul. I thought I was going to be in Dallas my entire career it's, it's, um, for the it, longest time. Yeah, it's safe to say you wanted to be a Maverick. 100%. Mm. 100%. I, I, I 100%. Yeah. I wanted to be a Maverick. And, and I thought I was going to be there for, like I said, uh, my entire career. It's something that, um, you know, when the business part comes knocking on the door and you got to start. Anything yeah, can yeah. happen. Anything can happen. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I, I, I completely get it, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, shifting gears a little bit. What, what now that you are going to be in New York, supposedly one of the tough places to play. Right. And I interviewed mm-hmm. with a gentleman there. I can't remember his name from New York times. One of the, uh, one of the papers there in New York, and one of their questions was exactly what you just finished talking about, was whether or not you can handle the bright lights of New York. Mm-hmm. Can Jalen handle we'll the bright I know this is a goofy, probably a silly question, but what do you see it being any different? Can you handle New York and the scrutiny that comes with being a, uh, a starting point guard in Manhattan? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I grew up, I grew up in a household with, uh, Rick Brunson coaching me <laughs> Yeah, I know my Rick. entire life. <laughs> so, uh, it's, ch- it's changed now. Like my dad, like when he was watching me over the past couple of years, even in college, like it's, it's definitely calmed down. He's not the same type of coach, but, uh, he, um, I'm ready for it. I've, I've been a person who's went through a lot of adversity. Um, I mean, on the court adversity and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I've always came out on the other side and I've always been successful at the summer said I couldn't do something. And so um, I find this to be no different. Uh, yes, it's going to be difficult, but I've never run from a challenge. Um, this is a perfect opportunity for me to just prove people wrong again, mm-hmm. but at the same time, prove myself right. And um, like you said, it's going to be hard. There's going to be a lot of scrutiny. It's going to yeah. be a, a wholly different feel. But the same, it's but in the same realm, it's going to be the same. So I'm not too focused on that. I'm just focused on me getting better every day and trying to help my team win games. How much does it help that that you just talked about your pops? How much does it help Jalen that uh, Rick was? Uh, Signed on with the Knicks as an assistant coach. Great coach, by the way. A lot of people don't know that Rick was a high school coach in the Jersey, Philadelphia area and was an outstanding coach with some pretty talented players. So how much does that how much does that help you as far as the adjustment is concerned? 
Um, well, one, he had great players. Uh, so the, the players made him good down in South Jersey. So let's let's let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's be real. Let's huh? start with that. Let's start with that. Um, and then um, I mean, I'm I'm excited. I've never played for my dad. Um, like while well, he's been on staff, he's kind of been always been like a mentor, trainer, figure for me. Um, but I'm excited. He's a person that's always held me accountable. Um, and it's the craziest thing ever. Every time my dad has said something basketball related to me, um, it has always come true. Like he, like in high school, he said, "If you do this, if you work hard, if you if you just help your team win, and not really think about yourself and lead, you can become an All American." I became an All American in high mm-hmm. school. So if we do this on this team, you can end up winning a national championship, winning a national mm-hmm. championship, and we made goals. Well. We made goals throughout the rest of my college career. Like, if you do this and this and this and this, like, break this down, that could all happen for you. National play of the year, um, national champion, uh, Big East champion, all that, all that stuff. It, it was just, it was things that he told me to, like, make goals for and just how it was going to help me push myself to reach those goals. And so um, it's kind of hard to run away from that. Like, mm-hmm. everything he's helped me try and do has come and helped and has come like to the forefront and has worked out for me. And so um, how do you run from that? Right. And you've been successful with it time in and time out. Yeah. And um, it also helps that like, obviously that Thibodeau is here. Um, I've known him since I was, he probably knew me before I even remembered, but (laughs) I've I've known him since like eighth grade when I moved back to Chicago um, or moved to Chicago. Uh, but um, a lot of connections here that um, that make me feel comfortable, and I'm really excited for that. Let me ask you this, JB. You 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 said something that caught my eye. People have doubted you. I don't think a lot of people realize that you were you won champion. You talked about college championships, right? And mm-hmm. you get to the draft and you slip to the second round, if I'm not mistaken. Has that? Uh, has that chip stayed on your shoulders? Is that why you approach your career now that you're at this level, the way you approach it? Without a doubt. I've, I mean, I've always approached everything with that kind of same mindset. Um, my parents didn't really give me a choice. That, that was the only mindset I was able to have. Um, there's, I saw this, I, I said on the last podcast, with, I was on a podcast with Duncan Robinson, and we were talking about how, how people describe me as a player, mm-hmm. and it's crazy. Um, it was like, I, I'll find it, and I'm going to send it to you. Okay. I saw this tweet not too long ago. It was like, Jalen Brunson is a nice player, but, like, there's always that but. Yeah. And so I said that on the podcast, and then someone kind of stitched it and put it with once I signed um, or agreed with the Knicks. Yeah. Um, all like the national media, like on ESPN or Fox or whatever, were saying, yeah, Jalen Brunson is nice, but Jalen Brunson is this, but and then like it happened every single time. Mm-hmm. So it's nothing new. Right. And, um, but the fact that someone pointed that out and I got to see that again, it's like nothing's changed really. <laughs> so, I mean, it, only thing that changed, I guess, is the, is the money. But, I mean, I'm still the same me. I'm going to be the same person. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to continue to prove me wrong. Nothing, nothing wrong with the money, brother. You got your bag. You deserve your bag. Um, shucks. I, next, are you closer, JB, to the guy that, that we witnessed uh, doing the, the, the playoffs where you were fantastic? I mean, sensational as a player. Luca was out, and you know you guys still able to have success mainly because of the way you played in that that first series against the Jazz. Do you think you're closer to that as a player, or what we saw during the regular season in your first couple of years here in Dallas? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I believe where I'm at as a player is in the perfect, I'm in the perfect spot because I've achieved a decent amount to be kind of, I guess you can say, recognized or 
like I have a little bit of notoriety mm-hmm. with what I've been able to accomplish so far. But um I know there's another gear. Mm. I know there's a couple more gears. Um I believe I can hit those gears. And um that's how I approached it. Um I think most importantly is that I'm doing whatever it takes to win. How do you know, JB? Is it the work that you put in? How, how do you know you can be an all-star player? I've said this on the air before, that you had that ability, and of course people think you're crazy, but I like to think I know a little bit a little bit about basketball in that point guard position in particular. What, what, what yeah. gives you the confidence that you can be an all-star caliber player? Because if you do that, then clearly you, you guys will have success in New York. Yeah. Um, it comes, my confidence comes to my work ethic. Um, I believe I, I work really hard. I, I believe that, um, that, uh, I, I just, my preparation will prepare me to be successful. And, um, I do my stuff, my routines throughout the year. And, um, it keeps me, keeps me in line with everything I have to do, but uh, it's, it comes to my work ethic. I know that there's still more things to achieve. Um, but at the same time, I'm not trying to achieve those personal goals um, while trying to, I guess, just get mine and mess the team up, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I'm trying to achieve my team goals, but if that happens along the way, then I'll, obviously I'll accept it and be happy with it. But um, I just know that I can do more. I know that I have this in my – I have it in my, in my DNA that I can continue to just get better. And I've done that at every stage. I've gotten better and better when people have put a ceiling on me. And um, I just keep breaking through those ceilings. Can you be an all-star? I believe so. I definitely believe so. How good are the Knicks going to be this year? And what is it going to take for you guys to make the playoffs? You made it the year before this past season and took a step back. So what, what do you think the ceiling is for the New York Knicks? Um, I think we can be good. I think we can be pretty good. I think for us, it has to be um, a day-by-day thing. We can't just focus on the end goal. And we got to focus on our process and how we can get to that end goal. Um, like this team was a four seed of the season before and um, with very similar personnel. So I think um, we can be very good. I think the, the biggest thing for us is like our chemistry. Um and just how are we going to be on the court? How are we going to be able to, I'm going to use uh, my Dallas terminology, how are we going to have our chemistry and our accountability on the court? Like how are we going to be as a team when it's crunch time? Um, <laughs> I think that's the, that's going to be the biggest thing for us. Like we have the, we have the talent, uh, we have the personnel, but we got to put that together and be a team. And uh, I think that uh, we have the opportunity, we have that ability. Um, it's going to be very interesting for us, but I'm very excited. Jalen, not including Jalen Brunson, who's the best point guard in your opinion? Give me the top three point guards in the NBA and why. (sighs) (laughs) Top three, no order. No order. I'm gonna say Stephen Curry. Okay. Can I stop Point you a second? Forward. Let me let me let me stop you yeah, when you say ahead. Steph. Jay. What makes him so special since you started with Steph Curry? I mean, he is undeniably one of the best players ever. Mm. Undeniably. Um <laughs> I'm trying to think of words to describe this guy, but like he's like, <laughs> it's he's pretty self-explanatory. Like he's he's one of the the, the be- better players I've seen. Like, and the fact that I've gone against him and seen him up close and personal, like that, the dude's a great player. Mm-hmm. He's great, and you've seen the work ethic. Um, I admire guys that work hard and um, are really about their business, and just like just go out there and just do it. Right? There's no there's no gimmicks, no nothing. Is he? I mean, he deserves that. He's one of the best players to ever play this game, and um, so yeah, he's in that list without a doubt. Him. Um, 
another one point forward Luka Doncic <laughs> you were going there. <laughs> Talk about Luca, man. I mean, we, nah. we, we talk about Luca all the time, but, but Luca is very unique. I agree with you when you say point forward because he'd probably make the All NBA team as a three and a four in the league. Yeah. Yeah. He can, I mean, he is a, like a forward's frame. Like he's like six, eight. Well, yeah, I, I'll say six, eight. I'll be nice. <laughs> um, he, uh, he can do everything on the court, dog. Like we've seen it up close and personal. He can do everything on the court. Um, he can make the the zero the one percent of passes that like not a lot of people can make. Um he can see over top of defenses. Um he has range. Uh, he's physical. And uh, he's just he's so gifted that like you can you just there's no way you can not put him in that list. Did now, you know he was gonna be great? I'm sorry, Jalen. Do you did you know he would no, be no, no, as no, good no, no, as no. Say again, I'm sorry. Did you know he was gonna be that great when you first saw him as a player? Did you have any inclination that this guy was coming here from Slovenia and gonna take over the league, basically? Um that quick? Yes. It's happened pretty darn quick. That quick. It happened. Like his his rookie season, he had a great rookie season. All of a sudden, boom, all star. I mean, um, MVP candidate mm-hmm. the next year. Like it was instant. So, like I just I don't know. I just didn't see it happening that fast. Mm-hmm. Like maybe by year three or year four. Like yeah, year two he was an MVP candidate. That's out. That's un. That's unheard of. So um, I definitely saw like how special he was since the day like he walked in and um he's taking the lead by storm and it's it's just it's like a ticking time bomb when he's gonna win that MVP. Let's put it that way. Mm. Who was your third guy at that point guard position? Third guy. Third guy. I'm missing some I got Oh, I'm I, oh, I'm I, I you have time. No, uh, no time. And I know I got time. Can. I got time. I'm trying to think. I'm trying yeah. to think. I'm trying to think. Hmm. I think one player who I would put there just just because of I I'm gonna say John Morant right now. Oof. I'm oh. gonna say John Morant. And it's I'll say Ja because he, what he was able to do last year, and um, just watching him as a leader, like he's a very vocal person. Mm -hmm. He's going to let you know how he feels. All the time. (laughs) He's going to let you know everything all the time. Yep. And um, and his team, like his teammates embody that. And so when you see, like, when you see the Grizzlies, like you see a, a person like Ja, and then you see his teammates embody his that type of mindset and his swag and how everything. So when I see that, I'm like, he must be doing something with that team for them to love him that much. And mm-hmm. then he must <laughs> like be a great the, leader. Yeah, He must be talking all the time. Mm-hmm. He must be showing them how hard he works in the gym. Like it has to be like. Kind of like Kobe no, used to be, a, right? Yeah. Like you can't like just. You don't get that type of um, respect without being able, to, being a person who's a leader, a hard worker, and cares about his teammates. So his teammates care about him. You can you can visually see that. And so, um, and I'm not even talking about how he is as a player. Like we all know how he is. He's he's a freak of nature. Mm-hmm. You know, he can do things on the basketball court not a lot of people can do. So, um, but like when I see a player like that who embodies like the little things, like the leadership parts and the aspects of it. Um, that doesn't go unnoticed by me. I, I love to see that from players. We we have a little segment called Fact or Fiction that we do in the podcast. So I'm going to hit you with fact or fiction. When moi, Derek Harper, was in his prime and Jalen Brunson in his prime, you had no chance against me, right?
Google me if you have to real quick. No, I'm just, I, I don't, I don't, you're my, you're my old head, so. <laughs> so you got to give me a break, JB. I'm going to give you a break, man. I'm going to give you a break. Give you a break. Tell me how you really you feel, break. JB. You're not going to hurt I'm my feelings, man. I, I, I can't even, I can barely walk out of this studio. So I, I'm, a, I'm, you're talking about an old head, just like you just said. I'm an OG originally, <laughs> an OG, but you didn't have a chance. Facts. Whatever you say. <laughs> okay. Whatever you say. Okay. I Whatever re- you say. There's, I, a lot of people, there's a lot of people who said they didn't have a chance to make it into NBA. Said the same uh, thing about me, JB. Hey. Said the same thing. Whatever I, you I, say, man. Like I said, like I said, I guess, like I said, you're my old head, so I'm, I'm going to let that slide. I'm going to let that slide. Okay. Well, well last. I'm not going to answer that. I'm not, I'm not you're gonna not going to answer, answer. Gonna okay. answer. <laughs> last, <laughs> last, last, answer. Last, last, last couple of questions, man. Have you, um, have you surprised yourself? being where you are right now as a player and the things that you've been able to accomplish. Have you, you ever think you ever look back and think, man, I'm, 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 I'm reaching some of my goals that, that I thought I could, could get to, but does it surprise you at all with what you've been able to do with yourself in such a short period of time? Like we said about Luca. Yeah. Yes. And no. Um, like, like you said, like I've, I've made goals myself. Um, and stuff. So like, it doesn't surprise me that, um, some things have turned out the way they have turned out. Um, but at the same time, like, it's still like a surreal thing. Like I'm in the NBA and I'm doing things in the NBA that I've always thought about since I was a little kid. Like that part is like the surprising part to me, the part I'm like, wow, like I'm really doing this. And, um, even four years in, I I think like that sometimes, Mm -hmm. um, and like my dad won't say it, but like sometimes when like I can tell when he's like when he's being like he's a proud father. Mm-hmm. I can see that sometimes. And, um, so when like when moments like that happen, like that's when I kind of like mm-hmm. reflect and think about everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. But uh, for the most part, whenever I accomplish something or do something, it's always like, all right, what's next? Mm-hmm. Like, what's next? Like, what's the next step for me? Um, Great question. What is next, Jay? The next step. Yes. I'll get I'll get back to you in a couple months when I write my goals down. I'll get back to you. I haven't even thought about my goals yet. Right. Man, you're the best, man. Sorry for the complications a little bit earlier getting you on here, but you know you're my Anytime, guy. Man. You 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 I'm proud that I was the president of the Jalen Brunson Club while you were here in Dallas. Gonna miss you. But uh Keep getting it done, man. Keep doing your thing. Sky's the limit for how of course, man. successful you can be. So thank you for joining Harp's Court, and I'll be reaching out to you soon. Of course, man. Thank you for having me, man. Right. I'm, I'm, um, I'm going to uh, rep that number 11 with pride, man. With pride, man. Rep it. Yes, sir. Be Appreciate blessed, you. okay?